the supercharger moment for hydrogen is here. Nikola Motors, alongside its subsidiary Hyla, has just launched the very first commercial trucking hydrogen refueling station in California, as well as launching the first hydrogen corridor in Alberta, Canada. With a 500-mile range, these trucks can achieve a certain amount of distance pretty fast, but obviously bottlenecks are still going to be a massive challenge for some of the longer-distance suppliers. And that's where you need investment in capital infrastructure to allow these trucks to refuel at the right spots with the right capacity. However, because hydrogen follows a similar logistics dynamic as gasoline or diesel because it is a fuel instead of an electron, the infrastructural challenge is not nearly as severe as it is for electric vehicles. And particularly, the challenge gets a little bit more promising for Class 8 semi-trucks. First things first, folks, it's important to remember that hydrogen is a very abundant resource. It's produced at a very large scale in the United States and is used for various applications right now, like ammonia manufacturing, steel processing, and even oil refining. Renewable energy, as a matter of fact, is only just one small portion of the current hydrogen sector, which means when it comes to demand as well as supply chain and technology, a lot of the development is already happening. At this stage, the real challenge is getting people to put money forward to continue these developments to cater to new applications like hydrogen trucks. And that is exactly what is surely but slowly starting to happen so far in 2024. Obviously, the goal is to produce hydrogen from renewable resources, particularly from electrolysis of solar or wind. But even if you are using steam methane reformed gases, the carbon emissions of a hydrogen truck are significantly lower. And similar to the transmission and distribution challenges faced with renewable energy where most of it is produced in areas where there is little to no demand of that energy, hydrogen has a similar challenge to overcome, although be it in a different form. Instead of building permanent infrastructure with transmission lines, you are instead transporting a molecule over long distances using compressed or liquid tanks. And that, as it turns out, allows for a much more flexible stakeholder and infrastructure development solution for companies like these. Global companies like Air Liquide and Lind, for example, in the United States, already run hydrogen routes of production from their facilities maybe in the desert or near the Nevada border to the Bay Area or suburbial areas of LA or San Diego. There's indeed a high concentration of customers in that area, and these companies are already manufacturing this hydrogen at a very cheap cost compared to green, which is exactly what's going to drive down the cost of the infrastructure itself. Plus, unlike most charging standards, the 870 refueling standard is standardized, and the Nikola Hyla station can, for example, power any hydrogen truck that is available on the market today. What's more is the fact that these stations can support the refueling to 100% of anywhere from 25 to 30 trucks per day per unit. Instead of it taking two hours to fast charge an electric vehicle or a semi-truck at a similar scale using megawatt charging, this refueling station using hydrogen can top up your truck in just less than 20 minutes. And that 20 minutes can give you more range than you can potentially get from an equivalent battery electric solution, which is exactly why hydrogen is being pursued in the first place. What this means is that you don't necessarily need a high quantity of refuelers in a specific area. Because the duty cycle of each station is so high because of its ability to refuel a truck so fast, you can have a much simplified infrastructure for certain counties 
with stations that are accurately located on logistics routes. And especially in corridors like in Alberta, Canada, where you have very specific and straightforward routes from cities like Edmonton to Calgary, you only need one viable station somewhere between the 40th to 60th percentile on the route distance. And from there, the operation is extremely similar to any diesel truck, where you stop on demand at a station that is open 24-7. Liquid hydrogen, as a matter of fact, is almost three times as energy dense as gaseous hydrogen. And Canada themselves expect to get around 5,000 of these hydrogen trucks with an appropriate amount of stations in the state by 2028. And if Bill Hall, the CEO of Coyote Container, has anything to say about this, the main issue with his fleet of Nikola trucks is only the lack of infrastructure in routes outside of Southern California. The second issue is weight, and the third issue is that it is too expensive if he didn't have government incentives. And as we can all probably tell, those two issues will only be fixed by time. Give the supply chain issues a rest, as well as the high interest rates right now, and chances are in a couple of years' time, we'll see a lot more of these hydrogen trucks roaming around U.S. roads than initially thought. Brazil folks, that is just my take on the situation. Let me know your thoughts on Nikola as well as the hydrogen trucking era down in the comment section below. And thank you very much for watching. Take care.